Hello, everyone, and welcome to Talk It Out, where we uh, talk it out. My name is Duryea Rashad. I'm so happy that you all are here. It's Thursday, my favorite time of the week. Um, if you haven't been to Talk It Out before, this is a space where people of opposing views can come together and have a healthy and productive dialogue in a respectful way, keeping in mind that it's not always about proving who's right and who's wrong. Sometimes it's simply about listening and being heard. Now, before we hop into things, I want to first wish everyone a happy holidays because Hanukkah just is, is, I think we're in the midst of Hanukkah. So the holiday season has officially started, I believe. So happy holidays to everyone. I hope everyone is safe and wearing their masks. Um, I also want to ask if you're watching right now, click the share button and let your friends know we're trying to grow the Talk It Out family. You can find us on Facebook at Wonelli Media or WNM Talk It Out. You can also find us on YouTube at Wonelli Media. Wo is spelled W-O-E. You can see it at the ticker at the bottom. You can also find us on Instagram, WNM underscore Talk It Out or at Wonelli Media. All right. Now, without further ado, let's introduce our illustrious panel. First returning is a great friend of mine from high school, dancer, realtor, extraordinaire, Miss Sam. Sam Harden, how are you? I think you're muted. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm doing well. I'm doing good. I had a rough day, but um, I'm here and I'm excited because I I always have fun doing these. And I was going to say, like, yeah, you know, you know, it's turn up time when you were talking out family. So I'm glad you're here as well. All right, so just yeah. a little bit about Sam. Sam is a realtor with two beautiful daughters. She has an edibles business called Marley Bears that focuses on making THC infused gummy bears, and she's a dancer. Before getting into real estate, she founded the dance department at a local Atlanta charter school, KIPP Atlanta Collegiate. Um, mm, that's funny. Kip Atlanta Collegiate. Besides dance, she loves the water and is a mermaid. <laughs> that's so funny. That happened in real time, Sam. Okay, all right. <laughs> Next returning panelist is one of my, I'm not gonna say one of my favorites because I really like all my panelists that come back, but this one, I just like how like I expect us to always agree on things and we rarely do. Miss Mo Smith Pro. Hey. You muted. Wait, wait, uh, okay. Wait, this isn't this isn't geeking out. Did I just No, wait? this is not geeking out. Did I just waste my Hero Academia shirt for nothing? <sighs> oh, you thought this was geeking out? Oh, man. Geeking out is on Monday. See, show what you oh. know. Show what you know. But that's a good plug. Geeking out is our sister podcast every, every other Monday. So come to watch that. All right. Mo, a critical thinker that's too conservative to be liberal and too liberal to be conservative. You can check out their social media. My apologies. I misgendered. They, them is... Mo's pronouns, Mo Smith Pro, and donations are always welcome at Mo Smith Pro. Dollar sign, Mo Smith Pro. Let's be clear. All right, how are you doing? Besides coming to the wrong show, uh, you know, I, I, I'm awesome. I'm, I'm feeling much better. Uh, I just hit the forty club this week, so you know, Whoa, no worries. Really? Yeah, I'm Sunday. Literally yeah. shocked. I cannot believe that you are the are that age. Uh yeah, that's what happens when um you don't have kids. That's and you drink water. Yeah, well, right. not, only sometimes. <laughs> so that's my secret to life. I guess no those big. few times are the ones that count. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, you know, <laughs> can't, you know, you can't have the brown stuff if you know what I mean. Mm, it's not sexy. Coca Cola is bad for you, right? I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm just kidding. All right. Uh, Next returning panelist is uh, one of our more opinionated fellows. Mr. Tristan Daniels. Hey, Tristan. Hi. Oh, sorry, I was looking at my phone. <laughs> it happens. We look at our phone sometimes. Tristan is a whiskey lover, a music connoisseur, Southern gentleman, Netflix enthusiast, and a political junkie. How are you doing this week? I'm well, sir. Life is good. I have no complaints. Just enjoying the holiday season and Trying to, you know, stay safe in COVID. Stay safe in COVID. And I, I I, like that mentality. Okay. Next, returning to the panel for their second episode, I believe, Mr. Davila. What's up? 
Hey, how's it going, y'all? You're hey, muted. Like, oh. I'm muted. <laughs> no, you. I thought you were, but you're not. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. So, hey, guys. What's up? Uh, Davila likes controversial issues and stirring the pot. Yes. He also dispatches truck drivers. So, if you're looking for one, he's your guy. And Mo is a truck driver. Hey, Mo. <laughs> All right. Next, returning to the uh, panel, and I'm about to read some some res the string of hits for this panelist. Um, soprano, I have to. I'm, she has to be introduced because I said so. Soprano Kimberly Render, born and raised in Columbus, Georgia, can be seen performing on classical stages all across the world. She recently made her off Broadway debut at the Lincoln Center Theater in the cast of Intimate Apparel, a new opera by Lynn Nottage and Ricky Ian Gordon. In the fall of 2019, she also made her Metropolitan Opera debut in the esteemed chorus of the Grammy-nominated record-breaking new production of Porgy and Bess. Offstage, Miss Render can usually be found in the classroom or working with youth in some capacity. She's a certified music teacher who is passionate about helping students reach their full potential. Hello, Miss Kimberly Render. Muted. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> What's up? With that beautiful introduction, and then I come on mute him. Yeah. Right, right. You have to read the hits. I feel like when you when you show up, it's like Beyonce is here. Stop it. You okay, know? keep going. <laughs> no, I'm just okay. But I am excited about that Grammy nomination. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Tristan. Come on. Come with it. All righty. So that's it for our returning panelists. And we have two new panelists fresh to the panel. One is Mr. Derek Patrick Moynihan. I hope I said that right. Is that is that what it is, Moynihan? Moynihan, that is correct. Thank you. Moynihan. Derek Patrick Moynihan is a self-employed judge, <laughs> musician, writer, and comedian. He's reasonably woke, and he works in com commodities. You can find him on Instagram at judge underscore D underscore rock and parlor at solid quarry, S-O-L-I-D-Q-U-A-R-R-Y for those listening. What's up, Derek? Uh, not much. Just on winter break at school, and you know, I saw the topic, and I was like, "Oh, I'm going to jump on that." And here I am. Dope. Now, I, I'm always looking for panelists. So, if you're watching or know someone who's opinionated and wants to get into one of these panels, it's great. There's only one requirement, and that is you are not disrespectful, because we don't deal with disrespect. We can deal with a differing of, of opinions, but we can, we don't deal with disrespect. All right. And our final panelist for this evening is a good friend of mine. We've been friends for 20 years. Not 20. 14. Something like that. It's up there, though. Miss Melissa Manning. Hey, Melissa. Hi. Hey. Melissa Manning graduated from Columbus State University with a BFA in theater performance, my alma mater. She's currently a voice actor, an incredible voice actor, who specializes in commercial work and animation, as well as a stay-at-home mom to her beautiful seven-month-old daughter. Everything. Where, where is the lie? You know what I'm saying? All that is true. Be sure to check out her website at melissamanningvo.com. How you doing, Melissa? I'm good. Um, I'm living in a perpetual state of tiredness, but other than that, I'm I'm excited to be here and ready. That's epic. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I have seemed to misplace my phone, which had my current events, and I just heard it. Okay. Well, my oh, there it is. Don't y'all hate when that kind of stuff happens when it's right in front of your face? I hate when I'm looking for my phone, it's in my hand. Um, all right, so my check-in for this week, I'm having a great week. Um, I'm excited about this panel. Um, I've had a lot of cool things happen, which I'll kind of talk about in commercials later. But before we get into our current events, how about we pause for a short ad break? We are counting down the days to closing out the beautiful Frasier. And one of the things that I really love about our projects, because we named them, we built character, they're almost like your little baby, and you're ready to present it to the world. And one of the things where you look at the little details, and then we start to nitpick, and then before you know it, a few weeks turns into a few months, and before you know it, your project is prolonged more than you thought, just for the little details. But one of the things you have to do is just breathe, relax, and trust the process. Know that you're exactly where you're supposed to be and you're doing exactly what you're supposed to do. And as long as you stay in committed action each day, you will ultimately get to completion. These things and more, we help investors get their start in real estate investing. So contact us, visit us at ishjessicamyers.com to learn how you can get your start today.
All righty. So let's hop into our current events. Oh, but first, those two ads. Uh, one is JessicaMyers.com. Jessica Myers is a real estate investor, and she helps other people get into that industry as well. Check her out on just it's JessicaMyers.com, M-Y-E-R-S. And also, no. Um, and also, I would like to mention the second ad is for anyone who's looking for musical beats and compositions. Email us here at admin at wonellymedia.com and we can get you hooked up. Also, if you want to promote anything on the show, then hit us up at admin at Wonelly Media as well and we can get you some ad space. All right, current events. Okay, so uh, Joe Biden is officially the president. Well, apparently they're still, and I wish, where's Derek? Let's bring him in here. Uh, is a pre officially the president as far as like the electoral let me rephrase that. The Electoral College has confirmed his presidency. But apparently on January 6th, there's another phase of this. I've never seen so many phases of the electorate, like picking a president in my entire life. So I didn't know that there were all these like, because it seems like usually it's like, unless yeah, but, there's like widespread fraud or something like that, it's usually wrapped up by now. I don't know why it's taking you so know, long. You know why? Because Trump is contesting the election. Even back when, um, back in 2000, when Al Gore had a legitimate uh, right. claim, he conceded because he still mm. wanted peace. Right, so right. Th these these are basically you know boring you know transitional things that nobody talks about because they're boring. No, there's not really news. The only reason why it's news is because Trump's being a big baby, and since he's being a big baby and he controls the minds of thirty to thirty five percent of the uh, voting population not controls the minds uh, well i mean basically the maga heads are all, all, almost to the point of a cult that the republican <laughs> party is scared of him that 106 members of the republican congress had tried to go along with that texas ag <laughs> that was trying to sue another state's election another state <laughs> my state, Georgia, election. Mm -hmm. When yeah. it's like normally mind your business. What happened to states' rights? I was going to say that. Now this is the, that's what surprises me is because this like a, a big issue here is all I the states' am rights. So confused. Which me too. I, actually, you know what? I'm lying. I'm being facetious. It just reminds <laughs> me that the Republican Party will do anything and everything in order to win. And now, I really wish. I, I just want to play devil's advocate really quick. It. I'm sorry, but I, I want I want to play devil's sure. advocate real quick because we're saying it's the Republican Party. However, when we're talking to the Republican Party, are we talking about the the people, the the, the politicians, or the voters? Because the voters clearly said something different this last election. The voters said they they tried to give a mandate to put Trump in. Unfortunately, there were more people than the Republican Party. I just feel like the, I feel like what the voters showed us is that when it comes to like party over everything, there's a limit to that. <laughs> and I feel like I feel like what won the election this time was a lot of Republicans who still voted Republican because the Senate is what it is. You know what I'm saying? They still voted Republican. But with Trump, they said, no, no, we can't do that no more. I mean, um, I mean, with, if, with what you're saying, wouldn't you be wouldn't you want it fair? Like if Biden wanted a recount, wouldn't you want the recount if it was in favor for Biden? I don't mind Trump recounting because at this point, I don't feel like it's going to make a difference. How, however, I'm just however, saying, you flip the tables. It's not going to make a difference, but and he's going to continue to pay out of pocket for yeah. it. The thing for me is like having to use this the citizen money, like tax exactly. money, to that do these happening. recounts, and then they keep proving false. Like that's the prior. It's like okay, you could do that on your own time and your own way, yeah. but because yeah. Yeah. Money, yeah. let me give a number. Wisconsin for their just for their recount alone was three million dollars. What? And that didn't come from why is it that much money yes, to three recount? million dollars? Because they had to hand count. They had to oh, so they gotta pay them folks. folks. They gotta pay them folks. They bro. gotta pay them folks. <laughs> and what people don't and not to mention the observers from both sides. Um, because uh people like uh what's his name? Giuliani get paid to be there. Yeah. It's Not to mention the lawyers that are involved. It's, well, and, it's a scam. And two, I think what people need to no, you're good. Um, so a lot of these recounts, if the 
if the threshold isn't low enough, then the campaign has to pay out of pocket for those recounts. And what I think bothers me the most about things that I've seen is the Trump campaign has been collecting money from people, people who I don't, if I'm being frank, poor white people who don't have money like that. But and who are willing spending, to give it. Absolutely. Who are, but it, it, well, it's no different from people who, who, who go to church and will give their last in church because they think it's going towards a bigger a, a bigger idea or a bigger thing. In the meantime, the Trump campaign is spilling this on pipe dreams they know that aren't going to co come to fruition. Not e and then to take it even a step further, the Trump campaign has sent out m emails and mailers getting money for the Senate race in Georgia, but has given zero dollars <laughs> to the actual he people. Pocketed He's it. pocketing it to pay for his expenses for this recount bull. Like what that's sucks about that to me, what, what really sucks about that to me is like, I don't have to damn. agree with your political ideologies in order for me to be like, damn, like I know people are allowed to spend their money on whatever they want to spend their money on you. But the frustrating part isn't the people spending the money. It's them knowingly taking advantage of that mindset. Yes. That's exactly. what it is. It's like, I know that these people will give me that money because I was actually just talking to our, our okay. So just to lump it in, because I guess I naturally went there. Keisha Lance Bottoms was offered a position in Trump's, huh, Biden's, um, I know, I'm sorry, <laughs> in Biden's, uh, not the cabinet, I think it's the cabinet, but in his yeah, administration. Cabinet position, yeah. yeah. Cabinet and she position. turned it down. And Ooh, I was talking wait, to it wasn't a, I just want to be clear, it wasn't a cabinet position, it was an ambassadorship. Yeah, it, either way, he was offering her a position in his administration, and she right. said no. She said no, thank you. And what really, what really stuck out to me, I really admire her for saying no, because Maybe I'm digging too deep because I'm optimistic, but it really stuck out to me as being like, oh, she's a politician that really cares more about because she said she her, she got into politics to serve Atlanta. Right. So she cares more about the reason she got into politics than about trends like um, ascending in that ladder to the next best thing in the next. It's not it's not a game of getting to that next high position for her. It's more about like, hmm, I want to serve the people. And when uh, I look at the, the way that you can disagree, hold on, but when I look at the, <laughs> that's fine, that's fine if you disagree, and I would love to hear that. But when I look at the way certain politicians manipulate the people, like what we're talking about with Trump and these and these people, it's just so frustrating because when I people are going hard for him, people sending money, all that stuff, like I'm like, how are you gonna say I'll be damned if I send a billionaire some goddamn money? Give me five dollars, please. please, and a house. Go ahead, Mo. You was trying to say something, yeah, quick point. Uh, the irony is Trump only spent eight thousand dollars on his whole campaign. What? Are you mean out of pocket or in general? Uh, out of his own pocket. Out well, his... he he loaned he loaned his campaign money that he then paid himself back. Yeah. Like, let's be very clear. Yeah. He loaned his campaign money, and then the campaign paid him said money back. So he yeah. really ain't. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That ain't Over, right. you got your money back, so it don't right. count. But to go to your point about Keisha Lance Bottoms, I don't know her personally, right? But um, to be devil's advocate, there's no long money in to be an ambassador. There's no long. You said it's it's it's. There's, oh, so you're saying the reason she said no had nothing to do with her ties to Atlanta is that it wasn't enough money? No, it's no there's no long game in politics to be an ambassador. The position itself is kind of like it wasn't even an ambassadorship to a cool country. Like it was kind of like a really. <laughs> so like, you're so you're telling me that like if if because I don't know a lot about this. So if you become an ambassador, it doesn't. Oh, I guess I guess ambassador doesn't really change things as far as it like, depends if you want to wear. Okay. Okay. It, it, like, like correct it. And if I'm you're the really ambassador dead. to the UN, that's different. Like the ambassador to the UN, okay, that's a pretty like Nikki Haley was the governor of South Carolina. She left that job to be the ambassador to the UN. They right. offered Keisha the ambassador to some South. Don't say the country. Don't say no, the country. I'm, it was some South American country, which was fine, but it was it wasn't one that we have like issues with, or there were going to be all of these kind of things she was going to be in. It made no it sense was. for her to go from being the mayor of the most populous city in Georgia, right. one of the most uh, prosperous okay. black cities in to go do country. that. One of the most prosperous cities. cities. And the prosperous cities growing in America as well. And all eyes are on Georgia right now politically too. I mean, exactly. okay. I, I look, y'all don't have to come for me on my show. <laughs> 
But that wouldn't have been a smart move for her. It, it okay. wouldn't. Politically, okay. it wouldn't. And it ain't about playing the game because she's still playing the game. Right. It, but she loves Atlanta. It don't. It, she, those two aren't. It's the fact that she loves Atlanta, but at the same time, it, right. it, it wasn't a good look. If yeah, she's okay. looking to have a long okay. time. Right after Stacey Abrams was just praised for um, staying in Atlanta and, you know, building the vote here and, and doing her part, it would look really bad for Keisha mm -hmm. to then, like, I don't know, run out and right. be like, no, I'm going to go pursue this now. Right, right. I see that. Um, I want to hear from Derek and Sam because they've been quiet. Who want to go first? <clears throat> go ahead. Somebody. I'm going I'm to okay. make you do it. Well, I... I I just managed to join back in. I've been having technical issues. You know, I jumped right. in here at the beginning, I guess, Keisha Lance Bottoms turned down some ambassadorship, but I haven't heard anything about that. I'm just hearing that for the first time. And I don't really know. Okay, let me give you a little context. Uh, basically, we started talking about Biden getting a, a, like his official, uh, the electorate uh, put him, they gave him the votes and Trump okay, contesting. Okay. And the way we got to Keisha Lance Bottoms was I was saying that it's frustrating to see Trump, who's a Republican leader, take advantage of the people who blindly follow him and using their money, people who don't really have the money to be giving a billionaire. And the fact that he would be of the mindset to just take advantage like that versus someone like Keisha Lance Bottoms, who I was just corrected. But I thought that her denying the ambassadorship was humble, but apparently it could be also seen as strategic and political. So that's where we kind of are. I mean, I I don't know if I have anything uh, to add to that necessarily. Um, I think for one thing, you know, maybe Donald Trump isn't as rich as he says he is. No. That's one thing. That <laughs> <laughs> you know, other than that, I don't really have anything to add to that. Okay. Sam? Damn. You better drop the mic there. Um, he did drop the mic and then bounce. <laughs> Come on. Go ahead, Sam. So, yeah, so to start with Trump, um, I do think that it, it shouldn't be about, you know, left and right, but wrong is wrong. And I don't think Trump has as I much agree. money as he says. Uh, and I love Keisha because she's from Atlanta and I'm from Atlanta. And... I'm sorry for people that moved to Atlanta. Y'all don't want to admit this, but people from Atlanta. It is different. Like, and they don't get it. No, I can't stand it. <laughs> it's different. And like, Energy. we just have a different love for our city and understanding because this Atlanta is not Atlanta. And that's, and that's okay, like we're growing and changing and you know, it's awesome, but it's different. And um, only people from Atlanta know that, you know, and y'all can be mad or not, but it's true. <laughs> and, um, and yeah, it was a good move for her. And I know she's not perfect, uh, you know, there's, there's, a lot to be said there, but um, I, I she's from Atlanta. Like, I, that's my girl. I mean, to piggyback you know, off of what Sam's saying, this is a culmination of over 40 years of hard work and dedication, going all the way back from Mayor Jackson to Andrew Young. You know, Andrew Young was actually an ambassador. He also had an ambassadorship that he upheld. So this is a long list of servants that have come from this great city. So, uh, you know, she yes, just, come with the facts. Hey, you know, that's what I'm here Ooh. for. Can, Give a historical context. Can I mention, so, you know, can yeah. I mention something real quick? And it's slightly unrelated, but I don't know if it's going to come up, but I think it's important that we like shout it out. Like, we really need to take a minute and shout out the fact that Pete Buttigieg is going to be the new transportation secretary. And let me tell you why. It's the first time a millennial has ever held a cabinet position. Really? Ever. Ever, I thought it was ever, good. yes. It's the first time someone, I'm 32, I don't know what everyone else's ages are, but I'm a true millennial. First time anyone who's a millennial to ever hold a cabinet position, first time a gay, openly gay man has held a cabinet position. Well, let me rephrase. It's the first time one will be, there's been one before that, when they sent him to Congress to be um, approved, Congress ripped him to shreds and was not feeling him being gay. And he had to be appointed in like a recess set, like on the back end without congressional approval. 
So this is the first time we'll have one go before Congress and hopefully um, get voted on and approved by, by, you know, by the Senate. But do we so know shout out to Pete is? and shout out to you know history and things. Yeah, shout out Pete. That's uh, all. I mean, I like history, but do we want booty change over transportation? I mean, why? Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, what is the problem? What's the problem with booty change? Only reason I said that is because you know I'm a truck driver, um, <laughs> and, and you know I. Mm, but I mean, you the, way, know, the way he ran South Bend, there's a reason why he's not. But, he he's not. He wasn't on the ticket for presidency. So, well, hear me, hear me out. Transportation is a lot of things. You know, it's airlines, it's trains, it's et cetera. I think and the trucks. one benefit, and think. trucks. I think the one benefit it will have him being younger is, I think people who are millennials and younger they care more about things like high speed rail. I don't think anyone who's older gives a, sh- you know what, about high speed rail or transcontinental ways to move besides airplanes. No, um, I they, think Pete. I think Pete knows logistics from his time in the army. He's a rogue scholar. He's a, he. I have faith in his ability to do the job well because he's a smart guy. I think sometimes I better than anything say. that Trump did. <laughs> okay, I didn't so. say. I didn't say he was dumb. I I questioned his ability to run that office, and that, that's a that fair. cabinet office. And that's fair. I will say this, though. I think it's about time that there are some younger people. I think that's a huge problem that we have in America is that the people who are running this country are not that there's anything wrong with being older. It's that they have these mentalities and they're not they're they're not aware of how the working class right now is not the same age. So the things that affect us directly, they're not relating to. And they're and you know how people get up in age. They don't try to relate to younger people. They feel like. um they're very set in their ways. They don't want to change. They don't want to compromise. This is how it is. And I think when you're looking at it, like, look at who the, the no. people who run the parties, Nancy Pelosi and motherfucking Mitch McConnell. Uh, that's uh, that's all they do. That's uh, all they do is but wait, to talk shit to each other. And I disagree. Um, I don't think it's the ageist thing. I think it's that we've allowed people to run office that don't care generally. And we've allowed. So you're them. telling me that the fact that 80 year old men who are and we have allowed it i'm sorry yes but (laughs) 80 year old men who because also bernie sanders is a girl but bernie sanders is the exception he's not the rule and you know that i know that however we allowed it but my point is 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 whether we allowed it or not doesn't change the fact that it is a problem because at the end of the day, the only person who can change term limits, therefore affecting the age of these people who are in these positions, are the motherfuckers who are in those positions. And again, so Congress would have to basically say, "Y'all know what? We should stop getting paid this good little Congress check." And that'll you're never right. Happen. We sure should do that. So we should make it to where we can only get paid. And that'll twice. never happen. But and that'll never what? happen. But, but the know, issue is that if politics if was what it's supposed to be, if politic politicians were there serving the people members of the community who came into office, served, and then bounced back to their careers, then you would have a better variety of people making these decisions and understanding the psyche because they're not going to be so far separated. A motherfucker who's been in Congress for the last 20, 30 years, they don't look at working people the way they really are because they don't know. I disagree. Because also- Uh, Hold on, hold on, hold on, because Kim been trying to talk. All right. Oh, I was just going to say, I think I, I understand the like um, age thing, but I think more than anything, having diversity in in all of our offices, I think diversity of age, race, gender, class, all of those things help us in the end. I think there's wisdom that comes from the old heads that are there. I think there's innovation that comes from the young heads. You know what I'm saying? I think there's things that black people think of that white people ain't never thought of because they haven't had to um, or Hispanic or, you know what I mean? So I think the diversity of that is what makes me so excited about this um, administration because this will be one of the most diverse cabinets um, that we've ever seen. Um, And I just want to see that continuing to happen because I just think solutions come out of having diverse points of views, whether they be old heads, young heads, you know, in the middle. 
Uh, I think it's important to have an AOC as it is, is important to have a Nancy Pelosi. I, and we're going to put some respect on Nancy Pelosi's name. OK, she is an old head, but she begins shit done. Excuse my language, mama, if you watch it. Um, but <laughs> I think it's important right. to have both of those. I think that's what democracy is about. It's about having those extremes, bringing these ideas to the table when it works correctly. Um, that's that's what it should be. I appreciate some of your point, Kimberly. But my issue isn't with, here's the problem. Deere is talking about making term limits. Let's say we made term limits tomorrow. And then we say that, you know what? You can have no more than four terms. So if you are a member of, of the uh, House of Representatives, that's two times four, that's eight years. You're going to be eight years in the Congress. That's it. That's how long you can be president. However... Do you know how long it takes for a bill to actually make it through Congress? No, I don't. Okay. So how long does it take? It, it takes a long time. That's now not many, a that's not a number. How long does it take? It depends on the bill. So but, it can but, take but, uh, it, it, what's the but, minimum but, amount? What's the minimum example, amount? But to give an example, Bernie Sanders has been in the game for over 30 years. He's only had seven bills. Hold on, before we Congress. move, before we move, because you just made and, a point. You just made a point. So how long is the minimum amount of time it takes for a bill to get passed? There's no minimum, but there's no maximum either. So the then, problem. so then, because of that, you would. So you asking me, hold up, wait. So you asking me if I know how long it takes, but you don't know how long it takes. No, I'm saying it's a it's a variable that you're not taking into play. It, it, I know that it's difficult, but, but maybe that difficulty in, they can make it happen, though. Right? What the difficulty comes through? What the difficulty comes through? The, 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 comes through. the issue isn't the term limit. The issue is the money in the Congress because these most of these politicians are paid off. So yeah, you might get somebody else in eight years, but guess what? These corporations are going to shell out more money for somebody else to come in to keep their agenda going. We're so there's more than a, one problem is the thing. You can't just say yeah, one. Exactly. More you than know, one. it's multiple things that you have but to address. The term limits ain't it because as long as people don't really care about their own personal uh congressmen and not actually voting to boot their ass out if they're not productive, then we're gonna have the same problems regardless. Let me speak real quick. Hmm. I, I, what, I, what I'm hearing is I think what we're trying to get across is that term, first of all, term limits absolutely is a big part of the problem. It might not be the problem, but it absolutely is a part of the problem. Now, what I'm hearing everybody say is it's more than just that. And I 100% agree. It's term limits. It's lack of diversity. It is people not voting. It is all these things. However, just because people not voting is a part of the problem doesn't mean we ignore the fact that term limits is too. But it is the biggest problem that there is. That's there's that's how limits. you feel. Because, no, there's but, term but right now I got the presidency. You. There's term limits you. right now in the presidency. But the president, the, president the term a, limits were, wait, the term limits picked for the presidency were decided by politicians or by the citizens? Who, who set term limits? It was by uh, uh, Harry uh, Truman. The Constitution. A, Harry so Truman it was politicians. My point is, Harry, there's- It was ooh. Harry Truman that pushed the bill to make it law back in, um at, at, after his, um, his term, because after they saw what um, happened with with uh, FDR. Uh, JF, FDR, right, JFK. Because he I'm was sorry. in there for four, uh, four terms, and he died right. while he was in office. And, and also, that's too close to a monarchy for for our country. And, all, and also the simple fact that the man also had polio, so he was already sick beforehand going in office. They and, thought he wasn't gonna make it. That's what it was. He, he made it too long. Ooh, but no, a long I, time. I guess Mo, Mo, hold up, because we're gonna move on soon. Just because this wasn't easy. I'm, what I'm trying to say is like. But term limits is you you is not the is not it ain't the answer. It ain't yeah, it. You keep saying that, but I'm it trying to explain. It. I'm I trying think, to explain something. I, it ain't Go it. ahead, Tristan. Well, I say I think you guys are kind of getting to the same thing in a different I'm way. I'm trying to say that, but but, 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 I I ain't it. It. but I Mo think, won't let me say it. Because so I ain't like, but, but Mo, like but you like, have here, to here, hold up, hold up, Tristan, hold up. Okay. But listen, if the conversation is you said several times what your stance on it is, you don't feel like term limits is the problem. It ain't. But you saying that continually every time I try to make a point doesn't change the fact that we've heard you say it, and I'm trying to make my point. And it you don't change me? the fact of what you're saying. <laughs> I, well, I haven't even made my point. But you know what I'm saying? Like, let me make my okay, point. Okay, make the point, and, I'll, and I'll say again. And I'll say again. Which is fine. Everybody who's watching, unless you knew, everybody know most feel like term limits ain't the problem. Now, right. <laughs> so, I feel like this. When it comes down to it, it's a multitude of things that need to be addressed Equally, because when we do that prioritization of issues, like when people say you're not going to like this example, but when people 
when you bring up violence against black people at the hand of the police and they bring up black on black crime as if one problem being bigger than the other negates the fact that they're both problems. No, that's we're not going to do that. I'm saying like you in this moment saying term limits is not the problem makes it to where term limits doesn't get addressed. But the truth is they're both problems and we can't negate one or the other because then one doesn't get solved. So then once 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 people are voting more, still term limits can't be changed by nobody but Congress. So now everybody voting, but term limits still the same. Okay. And now people are basically holding these positions hostage, like Mitch McConnell. But you know why? Yeah. Because ain't nobody voting. <laughs> okay. Well, you, know, voting. We, you, you got to say it. You got the last one. We're moving on. Okay. So, I just want to say that we have the most voters ever in history in this last election. So yes, ain't nobody voting, but people but are getting that, involved and there is a good number of people that are voting. Unfortunately, we still got Mitch McConnell. But not, not in Kentucky, Kentucky though. Kentucky, Kentucky, y'all need to get y'all together in Kentucky. Not in Kentucky. Right, right, right. Well, well, That's I will okay. Say that, um, um, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Kimmy. I'm sorry. Because it wasn't all. No, no, no. That's good. I was just going to say, Stacey Abrams hopefully will get the Democratic Party together and we can get these other states together, like she yeah. got Georgia. All right. But we're, moving we're, moving we're moving on. We're moving on. We're moving on. Moving on. Hold up. All right. Yeah, it, wasn't just, it wasn't It wasn't it all. I know, fault. but Mo, you have. We got. We get it. We all get right. It. We get all right. It. All right. So let's talk about these vaccines and this COVID, the number after 18. All right. So. Vaccine trials have started. Folks taking the vaccine. Some folks are not taking the vaccine. Apparently, only 30, 25 percent of black people have said that they're willing to take the vaccine, which has started so many interesting conversations. You said well, vaccine trials, though, but the vaccine is out. The trial I'm sorry. Yes, out. I'm calling them trials because that's what the fuck they are to me. OK, oh. <laughs> they might be public trials, but they're trials because we don't know. We don't know. Apparently, they skip animal testing. Um. It we did from, simultaneously. They did not skip animal testing. Okay. Yeah. I'm not I'm not negating. I'm not here to to say let me I'm speaking as an individual. I'm not speaking as the CEO of a multi of a digital media company right now. Okay. So now that I said that <laughs> preface, okay. Allegedly. No, these vaccines, listen, when you when you got a disease that came out last year, I said came out like this some Jordans, that came out last year that, that shut the world down. Basically. Just Beyonce the whole entire world. Then you're going to tell everybody, oh, this vaccine won't be ready for five years. And then the next year, it ain't even been a year. Later that year, you tell me you got a vaccine ready to go? Bullshit. So if you feel like... What happens when you need to allocate funds and resources to a issue that is has become urgent? And so, yeah. So you're saying it's happening this quickly because we focused on it. Yeah. 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 They even had a vaccine for SARS right before it killed it out on its own. We have all the technology and. Go ahead. Jose. Jose, you can't jump in and start talking and then go quiet. No, I was going to say, um, I feel like you kind of discredited the. You're kind of discrediting the, the 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 technology that we have nowadays to to kind of come up with this kind of stuff. Um, when you say like it just came out, you know, it's right. going to be waiting five Thank years and one year later. Yeah, no, I mean, it's not that, that I'm research. I'm debating the technology. The technology. So you're basically telling me that less than twelve months ago, y'all technology told you y'all wouldn't be able to come up with a vaccine for five years, and since then, even though the world was shut down, technology has somehow like leapt forward. So it's like, oh, we're ready. Are you going and, to diminish the no, I think black that woman? COVID, um, when it first came about, we didn't know anything about it. It was a novel virus. And then as, as it's progressed, we found that it has, you know, characteristics of this virus. And we found that we do have some information there. So as, it, we've learned as it's progressed on through this year. And then, of course, allocating all the research, all the funding. I think that that's why... It hasn't taken five years, but it's only taken a year. Um, Derek, I'm sorry, Kimberly and Derek, both of y'all trying to go. Yeah, yeah, I would say something. So I've been reading about this lately. I'm not, I'm not like super informed about it, but th this vaccine, um, at least with Pfizer and Moderna and a bunch of the others, it uses a new technology yes. that's never been used for vaccines before, right? 
you know, it's an mRNA vaccine, right? So previously in, in history, vaccines have all had to be uh, cultured, right? Like grown. And typically they did it yes, in a I chicken egg, right? So with these vaccines, yeah, there's no chicken egg with these vaccines. They just artificially make them in a lab. And that's why they're able to do it so quickly. And uh, so it, it actually uh, avoids the, the traditional mm. dangers of vaccines because it's so completely different. But because it's so new, you know, who knows? Are there other uh, dangers? Before Kim goes, I just want to throw this in. What that, made me, what that reminded me of is this. It's like saying it's better. It's like McDonald's, right? Which I love McDonald's. So I'm not going to use them. It's like a fast food restaurant, right? They have, they make faster food. But is it better? So, okay, so what we're not going to do is... Okay, it it's there. It's no, I'm throwing it out there. I'm playing... I'm playing I, 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 okay, I got this. It depends, it depends on what restaurant we're talking about. Wait, wait, because... Hold on, wait. Because Kim was going next, and I go to you, Mo. But let me okay. finish. Because finish. my thought process is this. I oh, mean, you God. ever... My, I remember, like, learning the term half-assed, right? And sometimes, you know, you, you do half-assed shit because you're not doing it the right way. It's like... I mean, it's not like we're talking about perfect example. Why do people wash the dishes before they put them in the dishwasher? Because you want to rinse you know, all the extra. Because you know the dishwasher really ain't going to do everything it need to do. Because if it was good enough, you would just put them in the dishwasher. But nobody does that. Because even though it's quicker and more convenient, doesn't mean it's thorough and more good and more um, acceptable. So you need the hand washing first. That's all I'm saying. Just give me a little rinse before you give me my vaccine. Don't just put me straight in the in the uh in the, uh the washing machine. Okay, it's Kim, then Mo, and then Davila. Um, we're not gonna compare fast food to like science that's been working forever on this fast science. science. Fast science. Science. Fast science. And advanced that's... degrees in studying this for what do you decades. think? What do you think came up with fast food, Kim? Scientists. Yeah, we just not. I'm sorry. I'm not going to let you do that. Secondly, um, the coronavirus, while it's a new virus, it's not. Like, it's a new strain of coronavirus. Yes. Coronavirus yes. has been around. Right. And and it's also, I guess, like a part of SARS as well. Well, they were already working on those vaccines. So they already right. had a lot of this technology and information that they needed. And once, like Melissa right. said, once they learn more about the the virus itself, then, the, then they could get to working. And like Sam said, all the money, uh, resources and focus was on it at that time. So I heard I've been watching a lot about the vaccine because I'm going to be first in line as soon as they say I've been out of work for 10 months. I'm ready to go back to work, despite what everybody think about people on unemployment. I'm ready to go back to work. So when the vaccine come out, I'm going to be first in line when they get to pick me. OK, um, so I've been watching a lot about the vaccine. And the best thing I heard this scientist say yesterday was like to say that we came up with the vaccine in the past eight months is to say that we went to the moon in a week. You know, it's like all the science and work that led up to that is what got us to launch yeah. the rocket. Right. It's the same yeah. thing that happened with this vaccine. All the science and technology they've been working on has been here for years. It just happened to work and come together at the right time. And but when I said about the trials, they did the same amount of weeks that they do in trials. It's usually just not done. It's done consecutively instead of simultaneously. So they did it at the same time. Are there concerns? Are there risks? Absolutely. There are risks with every vaccine that you take. That's why you got anti-vaxxers all the time. You know what I'm saying? But has it gone through the same rigorous process that it does for other vaccines? Yes, it actually has. It's just been in a more condensed time, but it's the same amount of weeks. It's just done at the same time as opposed to consecutively. Now, before yeah. I move to Mo, um, just because I feel like I have to defend that, I'm not saying that I disagree with any of what you said because I literally was telling somebody the other day the exact same thing. They were saying, you know, oh, it's happened too fast. And I'm like, well, no, I'm really advocating healthy skepticism, healthy skepticism. You know what I'm saying? Because what you said that's really important is that you've been following it. You can't say that for everybody. A lot of these people aren't going to do healthy skepticism. They're going to hear about it. They're going to make a judgment and move on. You're doing the research to know this is something I feel comfortable with. You know what I'm saying? Um, Mo, I see you, Tristan, but Mo got to go. You're and then be good. All right, go ahead. Okay, I don't have to go. Tristan, though I worry away. about with black people, though, because black but, people are very against this. And historically, I understand why they don't want to trust Absolutely. Anybody. But are those black people doing the work that you're doing, too? That's my thing. It's like the people I know that are black, that whether they will or won't, 
both sides. I know the ones that I know are actually doing the work, but I can I can't say that for everyone. I think some people are just saying, nope, it sounds like something crazy. I'm not doing it. Yeah, yeah. I just um, want us to have a good conversation around it because I want my black people to get vaccinated too. Like, I, I want my black people to be not, informed before they get vaccinated. The but it's still in the meantime, though. The conversation I think we're not having is is that at least from what I see, it seems very trendy to be like, I'm not going to, like, it seems like a joke or to be funny on social media to say, I'm not going to take the vaccine. I don't know what's in it. Well, you put Coke up your nose and you don't know what's in that. You spoke up, like, I'm I'm just being, I'm just the people I've seen say it. I didn't see you do all manner of things. You done put all kind of up your nose and smoke all kind of, and you talking about what you, you won't take something that's, then Mo, Mo, breathe, together. breathe. And then to top of all, <laughs> up, all the people saying this are people who have been vaccinated with actual putting actual disease in your body. If you are my age, you didn't get to go to school unless you were vaccinated, and your right. vaccinations were not the kind they're doing now. Right. You got you got shot up with actual smallpox. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, and, but now, now I you do don't want to take this. I personally, I'm not saying what I'm going to do like Kim did. I'm just keeping that to myself because we're going on between me and my body, me and my doctor's business. However, I will say this. I just want people people to go out there and really, because I agree with Tristan. It's a trendy thing. Some people are just saying it because everybody else is saying it. Well, I heard it's dumb. I heard it's scary. So I'm not going to do it. But are you taking the time to go out there? Because like like the comment says, COVID is SARS. It's just a different type of SARS. Severe auto respiratory syndrome. Now, because there has been research on it already, it makes sense to me that they would come up with it. Now, the reason I question it has no has nothing to do with the fact that it happened in less than a year. It has to do with less than a year ago, they told us it would take five years. The people working on it told us that. They told yeah. us a lot about this virus, though, when they didn't know about it. That's Did my best. You just it. said it, that part. That part. What? They told us a lot and didn't know. But They're now we're just supposed now. to be like, wait, they told us a lot and didn't know. This whole, this whole What I'm noticing from afar is that this virus is like, we don't know about it, so we're trying as we go. We're but fighting. They, they, they didn't the know. Basic, they claimed that's that. That's the basic scientific method, though. Right, but my point is, I, they, I yeah. see how they've made a statement and then the next week been they, like, oh, we found out something new. Made a, made a statement, oh, we found out something new. But now that there's a vaccine, we're just supposed to no, 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 no. I'm in support of what's happening. I'm I'm saying to be, I said healthy skepticism because it seems like people are like, oh, there's a vaccine. I'm taking it. But, but is it healthy? Your mind around getting the vaccine or not, wrap it around why did it come out so soon, right? So he's trying to understand was the proper research and everything implemented before it came out, right? I think that's what he's trying to say. So that's don't take exactly it as an, oh, I don't want to take it, right? So for me, the way that I, I get take, my flu shot every year, every me, year. Yeah, I get my flu shot every year because I have to. Right? I don't get a choice. But I don't. I mean, honestly, I think I think when Corona come out, the way that it was uh, hyped up and everything was complete bullshit. Um, <clears throat> I I honestly feel like if it was it was it was supposed to be taken seriously, then every every everything that came out, every disease, every virus that came out, should have been taken. To the same extent as coronavirus did, especially the ones that killed more more than what the coronavirus has, and it hasn't. That part, so, <laughs> a lot of hard. I mean, I agree with him. In America, we like we don't have like flu clinics and things that they have in other countries, so we don't take a whole lot of things seriously that we should. But I think the reason why maybe Kim is so passionate and I'm so passionate is because when you look at, I was on social media today. I saw Tank and Erica Campbell both post literally fake news. They said somebody was get they, it was somebody getting the um vaccine like live on TV and they said there was nothing in the syringe. Literally that's not true. That's not true. That's not true. But you put that if There's on social nothing media, in the syringe that'll kill you. Huh? If there's right. nothing in the- That's what th- bro, right. But the my point is is that you have there's healthy skepticism is fine, but I think what I've seen, even from that girl who played um, Shuri in Black Panther, Let's it's not right. healthy skepticism. It's not skepticism based in reality or fact. It's literally internet clout chasing, trying to be super cool. Like I'm, it, it doesn't feel like it's not. I'm not talking about you per se. I'm just gonna yeah, yeah, yeah. in, in the zeitgeist in general. It yeah. doesn't feel like healthy skepticism. It feels like. Some something else. 
Well, um, what <laughs> I mean, I'm saying is this, has though, crazy too. you're talking about, we're talking about three parts of a problem that I think y'all, some people on the panel are seeing only two. It's either agree to take the virus, sorry, vaccine, don't agree to take the vaccine. But the third option is that like, weigh your options before you take the vaccine. Because just like with any vaccine, because the, the way they explain COVID is that this is now going to be like the flu. It's going to be like perpetual. So this will be something that every season there's going to be a new vaccine right there. So every time, every time of year like this, like flu season, a lot of people don't get the flu vaccine. They don't do it. And people absolutely do die from the flu. They don't get it. People decide not to do it. Okay. But my, my point is, though, the people who don't do it, and I get what you're saying, Kim, when it comes to our community, black community. There is a level of distrust that comes from our history when it comes to things like this. However, that distrust can sometimes lead to inaction. So when you see the Erica Campbells in the tank say stuff like that, it's very detrimental to these people taking care of themselves. Hundred and thousand percent agree. However, I do not ever suggest anybody just blindly follow any any one way, one way or another. As an individual, just like Kim did, follow the news, research the news, go find out. What kind of vaccine is this? Because you just said a whole bunch about technology that, that's new. Do you think the average person knows that? Here's go ahead, Mo. Here's the here's the problem. The issue, Always been problems, Mo. Why I know, can't you just ever agree with me? I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna stop booking you for this show. I can't. I'm just playing. You love me though. <laughs> I do, I really do. What you're saying isn't wrong. The biggest issue, however, has been the whole overall management of this. Uh, crisis. Yes. If we had a competent leader from the top down, yes, yes, we yes. wouldn't have half of the issues that we're having now. Because back the then, misinformation. the misinformation, the level of misinformation is like, it, I'm gobsmacked every time I turn on the TV and have to see his face. You know, SARS happened back when Bush was in office. You think Bush was pulling these type of shenanigans? No. No. He was trying to get it done because he knows on a global perspective, the greater picture, if I don't get this nip in the bud, this is going to have a huge effect over the global uh, economy a long term. But do you think this fe feckless idiot decided, thought that was a good idea? No. He was just trying to keep his okay, numbers, he was just trying to keep his numbers up on the short term. And end up, and, right. He was concerned about his own personal uh, welfare. And also end up allegedly catching the disease, and just thinking he would, and then th he thought he was going to get sympathy. End up that backfiring. Not allegedly, so <laughs> I'm not, too. You know, I, I'm saying allegedly because he said he got it. I'm going to believe the man. He said he got it. However, <laughs> you know, he he was able to go to Raw to read to get you know experimental Care drugs. that most Americans cannot. Right. I okay. have you know, also Rudy Giuliani got the same cocktail, but we don't have that similar access. Meanwhile, you have people that are essential workers, which basically equals to expendable workers. They have to be out here Disney. daily. Right. People like myself, countless, countless people. They're like, oh, we thank you for your, you know, we thank you for your service. We thank you for being out there. No, you don't. And I'll say for sure, the people I'm very thankful of is is healthcare right now because on top of all the work they've done this year they're the ones who are actually getting this vaccine right now and they're the ones who are really taking that leap you know what i'm saying like they're and it's publicly so i'm not at all ignorant to what sacrifice they are making i'm not I'm, saying that you are uh, what i'm saying is that from this is the the level of misinformation has caused this issue now that we have a possible solution to this problem Got you. I agree. Yeah. And I just want to add that uh, that was going to be my thing, too. I'm 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 afraid, honestly, for the black community, because I really don't think we're going to get it. Like from most of the people I know, they don't they don't intend on getting it or anytime soon. And I think the answer is really in public 
education about this virus. People need to, like you're talking about, I did the research. People need to know. I shouldn't have to work that hard to find out about this vaccine, about the process. We know that Americans have questions about how this vaccine was developed. Put the information out here. I live in New York. Every day I see commercials on TV that tell me about wearing my mask and how it's helping the city and how it's keeping the numbers down. Every day you got people like, it's just a public campaign, like a campaign for education. And the same thing can happen about the vaccine. They can come out and tell us the details how was it developed? How is this one different from the vaccines in the past? How they're going to distribute it? They can put all that information out there. They can, and that's what builds confidence. Now, they, they put it out to a certain extent, but I do have to respect Pfizer. Now, I will be, okay, let me say for, clar for clar clarity's sake, I am a stock, I mean, I'm a shareholder. I do have shares in Pfizer. So let me go ahead and put that Ooh, out there. There, go. there it is. Okay. But okay. I will, but I will okay. Say, I, it's only a couple. But oh, I it don't matter. This. Everything did, did it just clear up for everybody else too, or was it just me? I ain't got nothing. I'm with you, sis. Make that mm -hmm. money too. Why you at? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Um. So we're gonna move on because we have a little time for like one more, just a little extra. Ian McKellen took the vaccine, and um. And Joe Biden is supposed to, Joe, just, I saw this on the news earlier today. Joe Biden is supposed to take the vaccine on camera, on TV. All the presidents said week. they were going to do it. Even, all the living presidents, except Trump, said they were going to do it. Um, but Ian I McKellen mean, he had said, this shit already. So. Yeah, Ian McKellen said that he is happy that he took it. And so, you know, um, this is also a note to everybody who refuses to wear masks. Uh, Sophie Turner, if you don't know who she is, she plays Sansa Stark in Game of Thrones. Apparently, she gave birth wearing a mask. <laughs> She feels okay. Yeah. So she says, I "Look, if I can, if huh?" Oh, I, was, I can speak to that because I had my daughter right when COVID hit, and I had to wear a mask in certain parts of my labor as well. So, oh, so she said, "If I can wear a mask while giving a child, uh -huh. you can wear your mask." So we had, I had my wife had you know our child, and we didn't have to wear a mask. Really? <laughs> I guess it's different for everywhere, but I'm just saying, if, if a woman can give birth wearing a mask, then. No. Okay. All right. Can do anything. People don't do them because I'm just like it's it's a piece of fabric. Like if if I can do it, then you can do it. To walk gotcha. into a store for five minutes. For five minutes, right? <laughs> That's what it'd be tripping me. I was like, it'd be different. Yeah, it was like my rights. I'm just <laughs> Listen, have you ever had a gas mask on? Now that. Now, if you can't wear these regular masks, you better hope ain't no apocalypse coming, especially not no nuclear one. Cause woof. All right. So uh, one more thing I want to talk about. Ooh, two more things I want to talk about. The Proud Boys are in DC right now, or they were in DC this weekend. And um, essentially they went to the two oldest black churches in the city and burned Black Lives Matter flyer, post, uh, flags. At the churches, and it's interesting because I was on this. I was. I'm in, I'm in this group, this Facebook group, and that's where I try to find a lot of different um, panelists. And I was kind of perplexed by the responses because you know a lot of times people talk about Black Lives Matter protests being violent, and I don't see them that way. Um, and people do, and generally the violence is about like property, like all that kind of stuff. And it's just interesting what happens when the pendulum shifts. Because it's it's as if we are supposed to be, as if it's the same, as if going to a black church, an, a historically known black church, and burning something in front of it is the same as vandalizing a target with this country's history. So, so go ahead. Well, first I was going to say, let's call it what it is. It's domestic terrorism. Like that's. But what I guess the is. question is, and I'm not asking for me, just right. because the the op, the the people who heard it their response was, what's the difference? There, so first of all, history is the difference. N black people haven't been going around burning up white people's shit. <laughs> That's just not a thing. That's not a thing. That's not a thing. We all know the history of the, K of the KKK burning crosses in churches. First or of on all- on front lawns. On front lawns. I, I'm gonna be, I'm, this is gonna be controversial what I have to say. Okay. I actually like controversy. I don't have a problem with the Proud Boys if 
If the problem, if the problem, here's the deal. We live in America. If you want to be racist, that's your business. I don't care. Just don't, as long as your racism doesn't affect me, like buying something or me being able to live my life, I don't care. If you want to be a racist piece of shit, that's your business. That's your business. My that's issue comes in. Right. That's your business. My issue is, though, you can't be a Proud Boy member and want to be a police officer or be a Proud Boy member and want to be a doctor. You can't if you want to just work at your mom and pop shop and only let certain folks, come, you know, that's cool, too. I'm of that variety. I don't want to pay from your business if you don't like me. If you don't like gay people, if you don't like black people, I'll spend my money elsewhere. I got options. I don't need your shit. Um, with all that being said, I have no issues with the Proud Boys if they didn't do shit like that. If you want to feel that way, that's fine. But to me, it's a step to, it becomes terrorism when you start stepping on people's property and doing things with the sole intention to terrorize, to make people afraid, to make them fear you. But once again, once again, um, now, and I think that last part, I was going to ask a question, but I think that last part clarified it. It's about the intended fear. Right, um, exactly. When, when, when people, and now I'm not really a proponent of looting at all, but I don't think it's the same. I don't think it's comparable to going to a church and burning something, throwing rocks in the glass of the church. I don't think it's comparable at all because that intention is fear. I don't think black people were trying to make white people. Because let's be clear, those Black Lives Matter protests weren't black people. It was, it was a lot of people. It was a bunch of different people. So they weren't trying to instill fear. They were trying to express rage, which is a for some people, that's a very blurry line. Like they can't see the difference. And I get that. I, it, it's not something that I agree with, but I get it. It's like for you that that can be cloudy because it's still you're burning things in a reaction from anger. Would so, you consider and I'm just, burning the flag a terrorism move. People would consider burning the flag, right? The regular flag. And, and so, I mean, if you correlate it to that and to try to regular flag, fear, the American flag. Sorry, the American right. flag. That's right. Um, I don't know when when they. I'm mean, not gonna say day. I'm talking about the protesters that were attacking. Or targeting white people, or at least that's how the media was portraying, and I could be wrong. But that to me would be like the same way as the frat boys are trying to do, trying to go and burn and instill fear, right? Or yes. or ed I or educate me that. on what what the mission of the frat boys is, because I haven't heard about them until just right now. Okay, let me let me just because uh, okay, first of all, it's a little bit different to say that that's a false equivalency. Let me just start there because first of all. Those proud boys stole those flags off of those churches' property. They didn't buy those flags. If you bought a flag, you burnt it. Okay, that's your business. That's not terrorism. You know, that's your business. That's your that's your given right as a citizen. But you stole those flags in a, in a in a way of intimidating those citizens, and you did it at the church because they know historically. That's how you get to black people because that's how they did it with four little girls back in the 60s. And also, uh, was it Charleston? Yeah, when, Charleston. The, when, the, guy, when the guy walked yeah. in the church. Yeah. And he said he almost wasn't going to do it because they were so nice, but he went ahead and blew them away. Oh, my God. All eight of them. And they were just sitting there having Bible study. So the false equivalency, it, it just it ain't going to rock. And furthermore, Black Lives Matter and the uh, the citizens that decided to riot in those cities, not necessarily the same people, because there's been instances, eyewitness accounts of non-black people going to loot and plunder and try to blame it on Black Lives Matter. Right, so again, that's kind of what I was getting at. This is another example of misinformation trying to create a false equivalency in order to make it seem normal for these proud boys, which my thing is, if anything, if you got to call yourselves proud boys like that, you know, that's kind of a gay term. So what are you compensating for, sweetie? <laughs> Why is it that people keep, listen, okay. Um, so I think somebody I, was trying to say I, something. Yeah, yeah. Can, yeah, somebody was trying to say something. Go ahead. I always struggle with this and I'm interested um, in what Davila was saying um, about the flag because so I was raised in a military family. My dad is in the military and in a, in a military town um, and with much respect for those that serve. But the idea of like burning a flag or stepping on a flag or throwing it on the ground, 
being equivalent to this destruction of like property, well, not property, but I think about no. it a lot because like property. Um, black, yeah, property. Um, but Black Lives Matter, I think about Colin Kaepernick, Kaepernick and everybody was talking about him bending a knee during the national anthem and how that was so disrespectful to right, Americans right, right. and Americans. And I always think like, so you care more about this physical flag than you do the ideals of America that he's actually protesting. You know, I, I always really struggle with that idea that like you can't destroy a flag. And I think it is a complete um, 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 false equivalency to the Black Lives Matter and the burning of uh, it in front of a church, like that flag in front of a church. There is exactly what Tristan said. There is history behind this um, and those actions and intentions and the very real terror that, that is there to impose terror period. There is no other reason why you would burn that flag. Burning an American flag, on the other hand, <laughs> to me, that's not necessarily terrorism because what what is it symbolizing? What is it supposed to terrorize? But the idea of burning mm -hmm. a Black Lives Matter flag in front of a church, to me, that is very much tied to terror. Like the whole point, I want to bring this back to you. You know. Thank you for that. And uh, from my understanding, there's two, there's two types of BLMs, right? There's the protest that's trying to do the move, and then there's an actual group that's BLM. Is that there correct? There is there is the organization, and then there's the movement. That's what I. That's how I um describe them. I don't know if everybody agrees with that, but the way I understand it is like because as far as the organization, like I, I don't really align myself with any organization uh, other than Wonelli Media. But um, as far as the I under the ideals behind the movement, I absolutely support. But I don't really know anything about the organizations. The organization is the movement. They're the ones that started and moved it. They no? start what my understanding is this. This 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 Black Lives Matter was and correct me if I'm wrong. Black Lives Matter was sparked in response to Trayvon Martin his murder being acquitted. Yeah. Yes. So and then, it was around that time when this yeah. became a, um a movement, organization, those kind of things. Now, what I've been told, because apparently the leaders of the Black Lives Matter organization have publicly stated some political ideologies that I do not agree with. So that's why I say I don't align myself with the organization. Like, but I, I, I was going to say, have, have you been to their website? No, but I, I, have, I have not been to their website. I Me Tell either, me, but I've heard, well, I haven't either, but I've heard that there's like, like they have some interesting, like the website, the organization has some very interesting um, points otherwise, you know, outside of like Black Lives Matter, the movement. Um, but again, I haven't. And that's that. why I don't align myself with the organization because I don't know enough about their organization. I know that they've claimed certain ideologies that I disagree with. Not like vehemently, but I, I'm just like, oh no, I'm I don't I don't align with that political ideology. But but I feel like before you align yourself with a organization like that, you really before you say I stand for the organization, you need to know way more than I know. About well, I think so. Is that why people fight the concept of Black Lives Matter? Yes, but that's, like, it's a phrase. But that's a lot of silly, people. But, that's why most people. Who but that's but that's even based in racism, and let me tell you why. Because there are based in racism. The the the, ra the rationale that BLM is bad, the movement is bad because it's somehow associated with the organization. Let me ex and let me explain why. There are plenty of conservatism, right? What Republicans follow. That is very anybody who's a Klansman is a conservative. That's just facts. But we don't shit on all conservatism because there are some Klansmen who are conservatives. You have um, the same can be said about um, um, uh, Judaism. You have most Jewish people are amazing, awesome, wonderful, fine, whatever. And then you have some people who are um, uh, Jews who then will say, yo, we need to kill everything in Palestine. But we don't punish all the Jewish people for that small group of people who have who, sh who have those feelings. Am I making... Am I making sense? Yeah, makes I see sense. what you're trying yeah. to do, but I don't think they're actually correlating it like that. It's just that what it stands for is what they're not trying to push. What they're actually trying to push is the actual value between behind uh, Black Lives Matter. Um, well, because uh, I, I want to bring it back to what uh, uh, Kimberly said earlier about the terror, right? And I just it, the one one thought popped into my head is I do day labor every now and then at this uh, labor hall, right? 
and it's kind of majority of them are you know are is black people that work there, right? And every time we go to work and then out there at the work, it's a construction site. Every time we get white people around, right? I don't get scared, but the the, the black uh, black workers that work there, the first thing they say is, "Oh man, here come the white folks," <laughs> and then they run. They want to hide. So I think I think what needs to be addressed is that terror first, and you know bridge that gap between why am I scared of white people and um. Well, I lost my train of thought. Oh, well, here, but, let me uh, respond to that really quick. I think the yeah. idea about the terror that's associated with it's that there, for me, for me, I can't speak for everybody else. For me, it's when I meet white people who act like there's no reason for black people to be afraid. That's the part that gets me. It's like, how, bro? Like, where have you been to where you don't understand? And then, or, or they try to blame it on us. Well, if black people weren't so violent, this, that, and the third, that kind of thing. And it's like, so you feel like it's us that's the, like, this is all like, our, and that's what makes the fear because then we're in a system that's generally ran by white people who were also side with those people. Oh, uh, he was in the wrong because he was in the wrong place. He shouldn't have been. Oh, that's why when you look at the media and this is, goes back to with Trayvon Martin, it, it's always, oh, well, he, they had to find a way to condemn him, to justify that man killing him for getting some Skittles always. instead of, when a kid shoots up a school, he was bullied. We 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 justify even still. He just murdered eight. like eight nine people, and we still oh he was suffering from mental health and he was bullied. Versus well he was a thug with skittles. <laughs> and and I'm gonna let it go after this. I mean, while you're laughing, I mean that these are honest portrayals. Oh, these I are, know. These are outliers. So that's the frustrating part right. because we're we're basically speaking anecdotal and as well as statistical evidence, and we're basically laughed at, and it's mm -hmm. insulting. So I just want to let you know that. No, and, I get it. It's just, yeah. Well, I was going to say I related but unrelated. There has there was footage, there was body cam footage released from the murder of Ahmad Aubrey, and the most frustrating part was was that when the cops got there, they just assumed that the white that guy, white guys that shot him were in the right. There was no actual investigating to figure out what happened, was it okay? The assumption just was, this was all above board, this was all cool, and then come to find out, none of it was above board, and none of it was cool. And it would have only come to light if that dude, it would have never come to light if it wasn't for that dude with the tape. But then the messed up part is the dude with the tape, he even lied. He participated in it by, he used his truck to block Amon, Amon Aubrey from running away. That so, and he that's why he was, was going to help him. That's the only reason why he brought exactly. that exactly. And, yep. and, and why he thought it would help him, I don't know because it, it most definitely didn't help him. It just made me have more questions. But I said all that to say whiteness buys you the benefit of the doubt, mm -hmm. always, every single time. If I, if I, if somebody is white and they're a conservative, the assumption isn't always, oh, you racist. We like. You get to say what your opinions are, and then I might think your opinions are racist, but I don't think most people think conservatism at a, at a baseline level is racist. But I know plenty of people that think if you say Black Lives Matter, that that somehow becomes a loaded thing. You don't get the benefit, that same benefit of the doubt. Okay, so we're going to head to, I'm sorry. Can I, can I just yes, say and then we're going to go quick. to a, a small ad break. I think if we're being honest, the way racism exists in America today is through systems and it's, it is um, it is systematic. And if we're really being honest, because of how we're socialized, everyone in America is racist and maybe Somebody to knows. different degrees, but everyone is racist until they realize what's going They're racist. On. Right, yeah. that they're racist. So, I mean, I agree that, that yeah, socially we don't equate the two conservative and racist, but I'm just pushing back on the point that I kind of just believe if you were raised in America, you, on some level, are racist. Um, okay, so we're going to go to a small ad break. This was a great conversation. I did have some other stuff, but I'll move it to a different show. All right, so let's hop into an ad break, then we'll come back. And when we come back, we're going to be discussing the legalization of 
drugs and not the kind you get from the doctor's office. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jessalyn Pease Garrett, author of Timeless, The Law of the Coven, my new book that came out August 1st of this year. This is the second in the Timeless series and it features a teenage witch. She's going to hone her magical abilities and we're going to pit her against a dark coven of witches. So I hope you enjoy this book as much as I enjoyed writing it. Timeless, The Law of the Coven is available online from all your favorite retailers. Thanks, guys. Hey, everybody. My name's Chris. I'm Durie. I'm Ricky Z. Justin. And Julian. Have you heard about Anchor.fm? It's the easiest way to make a podcast. First off, it's free. Oh, I love free, especially when we're talking creation tools that allow you to record and edit right from your phone and computer. And Anchor will actually distribute your podcast for you. So as soon as you're finished recording, you can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many other platforms. And you can make money off of your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's basically a one-stop shop for everything you need. So head on over to anchor.fm and download the mobile app now. And make sure you come back and geek out with us. That was uh, Jessalyn P. Scarrett, who's the author of Timeless, The Law of the Coven, which is the second in a series of books, which is really awesome and cool. It features a, a, a witch who can freeze time. I don't know if she can freeze time, she can affect time, sorry. Um, also, we have an ad from Geeking Out, which is our sister podcast. Geeking Out is fun. It's every other Monday. This Monday coming up, we're going to be discussing all the reboots and how we feel about the rebooting of everything all the time, forever, and whether it is um, ingenious or lack thereof. All right. So let's get into the night's topic. So if you don't know, if you're living under a rock, Congress, was it Senate or was it House that did it? House. In order for something to become the house, right. it, was a, it was the house. In order for something to become like federal law or whatever, right? The house and the Senate have to pass it. So the house voted on the D, the federal decriminalization of marijuana. Now, in states where marijuana is decriminalized or just altogether legal, technically the feds can still come in and fuck your shit up, depending on certain criteria. I don't, which I don't know. So the federal decriminalization means that basically you won't ever get arrested for marijuana. You could get fined, but you won't get arrested for it and face criminal charges. So this got me to thinking because I am of the mindset that if we legalize drugs and sex work, we will lose about 50 percent of the crime rate in this country. That's how I feel, because a lot of crime, Back. a lot of crime is byproducts of those two things. And, you know, and, my, and so I feel that way. So I personally am a proponent of it on multiple levels because I feel like also you shouldn't you shouldn't jail somebody who is using a substance like, OK, you shouldn't you shouldn't get arrested because you're drunk. But if you get drunk and get behind the seat of a car, that's different. You know what I'm saying? But but you can still actually get arrested for being drunk in certain places in public. All right. So let's have this conversation. Who wants to start, Mo? Who wants to start? Oh wow, really? I'm just, uh, I figured it was gonna be you because you leaned in when I when I said let's yeah. start the conversation. Uh, it's basically ninety years, um, you know, in in the making. Like this should have happened ninety years ago, and it wasn't about money because the Dupont family, uh, which was hella rich back then, they put a lot of money behind trying to not get marijuana be, um, illegal um, in this country. Unfortunately, racism won out. So, why do you, why do you, wait, wait, Hit, put me up, put me up on game. Okay. Why is, she's speaking facts. Why she's is the illegal, why, why is marijuana becoming illegal a byproduct because, of racism? Okay, because yeah. it, during those, um, in the conference, when, let me pull up the act, let me pull up the first act, okay. my bad. Pull up the act. The, it was the, Mar Get it yes, together, the Marijuana Tax Act. And this was back in 1937. What? Basically, yes. Basically, the only reason why it even came to be is because one of the congressmen that was on the floor said that if we if we continue the regular sale of marijuana, black men will kill will uh, rape our white rape women. white women. Yes, <laughs> queen. 
Are you serious? Yes. 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 Wait. Because, and not to like jump. But wait. Not to jump in. Well, I'm jumping. In <laughs> fact, I, I, and let's be very clear: it's the le- the 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 criminalization of almost all drugs in America have a have a root of racism. When you look at opium, opium was legal until the Asian people came over here and they started building the railroads and they were mad because they were smoking opium in these dens with white women. Um, the, oh. legit, bruh, they, they used to sell heroin in the Sears and Roebuck catalog. Yeah. You could buy Fur- syringes and everything. Furthermore. Why can yeah. they do I don't, I mean, I'm not saying that I would get some, but I'm just saying like, why? Fur- furthermore, another history lesson, Harry Anslinger, he was the government official that was over the Treasury Department over the Bureau of Narcotics back in those days. They made alcohol legal. He was out of a job. So he had to find something else in order to make the boogeyman, in order for him to, to keep a job. Oh, so when they passed prohibition, he had to. Oh. Yes, he was out of a job. Oh so, my God. <laughs> now, mind you, you have physicians that are saying, don't tax, don't tax me, bro. This is a medicine. Right, you right. Had, you had the DuPont family, which is one of the five richest families in the country at that time. Hey, we're bringing in hella lots of, of hemp. We're making money hand over fist. Don't tax me, bro. They were like, no, nope, racism. So again, this is another example that racism is a systematic disease that has been running in this country before this country has ever been made. Now, it, will I, cut, it will cut money and everything else. Your skin listen, color will cut out everything. I want to say something really quick. Just because uh, I'm going to go to you, Derek, just because you've been very quiet. And I know sometimes it's hard to get in with a group like this because everybody's so vocal. I kind of want to know your opinions um, about drugs legalization well you know he said he, he said the topic is what he really was into and sometimes you know so i want to give him an opportunity to speak all right well so i live north of seattle and so my views are kind of colored by being in the seattle area right? and so over here uh everything is legalized in the sense that the prosecutors won't prosecute you for possession unless you have a shit ton or right. if it's tied to something else, right? So everything's pretty much legal around here. And um, there's a couple of, of issues with it that I don't think get a lot of attention. One of them is that that doesn't apply to minors, right? Like no one has actually proposed legalizing drugs for minors, a good thing. right? And minors like, minors <laughs> like doing drugs. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna I'm gonna wait and see where you're going with this. They do. Well, I I'm just saying uh, that like okay, we want to end the war on drugs. That's great. I can get with that. But but they're still going to be uh, busting minors for having drugs. And one of the reasons for that is because uh, very young children have less criminal exposure, right? When they're committing crimes. So you know. Um, even where I live, the, there isn't that much gang activity, but there is gang activity, and they actually recruit kids beginning at uh, like seven and eight years old, and then you know ten and eleven years old. That's when they're doing all these crimes, and and the their main business is getting drugs well, for I just minors. Throw something out there. Um, right? Okay, because actually I'm very passionate about this topic. It's actually easier for children to get their hands on hard drugs than to get a cigarette. Or fucking beer. It's easier because in order to get a cigarette or a beer, you have to be given it by an adult or you have to go in there and buy it. So the legalization of drugs would actually help in stopping minors from getting their hands on drugs because then they would have to license and buy it. They would have to go through all the loops and swoops that anyone, like a kid trying to get a fifth, has to go through. Not to mention. Okay. Wait wait a minute, wait a minute. You're saying that if it's illegal, then minors saying, can get it from other. That's minors. what you're saying. No, what I said that's is said. once they make drugs legal, it will be harder for minors to get their hands on it because it'll be legal. But, but what you said is once it's yes. legal, then they'll have to rely on adults. 
But so long as it's right. illegal, then they don't have to rely right. on adults. Well, that well I'm not saying, saying it's, I'm saying it's not about relying on adults. What I'm saying is, right, legal. a drug dealer gets something out of selling a fifth to a little kid. They get money. I'm not going to. Yeah. You, let, let me ask and you, you what? Do you think little kids? Do you think little kids are broke? Do I think? Do you think they I have think money? Some of them do. Some I of them have, have money. Okay, and they're going to get the drugs. I think Derrier's point. I think Derrier's okay. point is that if if something is illegal, if something is legal, drug dealers have no reason to sell it. Yes, they won't. It, it doesn't make any sense. Right. So the only way for a kid to be able to have access to it is to go on a store and buy it the legal way, or to go through an adult. Who has to do something illegal to give it to get it for them? Like this, like I, everybody done been at the cookout when they're a certain age, and somebody lets you sip their beer. But that's different because also going to when you look at other countries where drugs are legal, they go about teaching. When I say drugs, let's go just out alcohol, right? Which is a drug. So in countries where the drinking age is is younger, they don't teach their kids abstinence. Like, oh, you're not supposed to drink this. If you drink this, you're bad. What they do is they teach children how to moderate their drinking. So once right. you're of the legal drinking age, they don't get wasted. They know, OK, I can sit this for my dinner. And then and so it's it's handled differently. And the numbers show even reckless activity in those countries as a as a result of being drunk are lower. I don't know the exact. That's not going to work for things like heroin or cocaine that are so addictive that like they do at once. And then. Alcohol is incredibly addictive, especially because it's legal. And if you there's if you look, Portugal is the first place that I that I ever heard of that decriminalized drugs across the board. All the drugs when they exactly. decriminalize when they when they decriminalized drugs across the board, they saw youth usage and all those drugs go down. And part of the reason social science attributed that to was that you didn't have drugs didn't have that allure anymore because they weren't illicit and yeah. illegal. It didn't have that same it wasn't that sick, shiny right. object. Right. It wasn't it it didn't have the same feel. So kids didn't want to do it because it wasn't it wasn't the cool thing to do if it was if it wasn't gonna get you in trouble. If that it's kind of like cigarettes sense. are. If now. it's not rebellious, then they don't want to be a part of it. It's right. kind of like cigarettes now. Like as adults, when we see other adults smoking cigarettes, it's always like, ugh. It was and, just not the way it was when I was growing up. And we have to think too, we have kids now and we all have access to more information. We know that shit like heroin and meth and hard drugs are incredibly addictive. Once upon a time, that wasn't necessarily the case. You may have done some heroin at a party thinking it was going to be a good time and didn't know that like what you would end up as. But if you're my age, I grew up watching Intervention when I was like in my early 20s. I have no, I ain't ever, ha I done done some drugs, y'all. I ain't ever wanted to do meth. I ain't ever wanted to do heroin. I ain't ever wanted to smoke no crack. I ain't ever wanted to do no Kratos. I ain't ever want to huff Kratos. no computer duster. No, Kratos is the name of that character from God of War. So we No, Kratos Kratos. it's a real drug. It's like, it's like bath salts or some shit like that. Oh, but God. yeah, like I, I think, I think we assume if you decriminalize drugs, then suddenly because that means everyone's going to go do heroin. No, nobody want to do heroin. Here's the, thing. There, Here's the there's truth. There's a difference, though. I want to say this because because you just mentioned decriminalize, decriminalize and legalize are two different. Two different They're very different. They're very different. That's correct. Um, and yeah. I, sh I'm, I'm probably maybe the only person out here that not necessarily for legalizing drugs. Like I You're don't know. It. Melissa, I'm sorry to put you I'm out not there. For it. Well, I'm oh, okay. not for it. marijuana, um, like mushrooms, you know, because in microdosing they show like some benefits. Fun drugs. For, um, yeah, for depression, they actually, there's medical studies that have proven yeah. that. But for stuff like cocaine and heroin, stuff like that, I just don't see a reason why to to legalize that. That's what I'm against. Here's my issue. I want to say this well, to everybody. Now, and this might be a case. I'm sorry, my bad. Kim, you were trying to say something. I forget my stuff real quick. So go ahead, Kim. Write it down, write it down. Okay. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm not necessarily for legalizing drugs. I, I, do think, <laughs> I, do I got, I got you. I got you. I do think marijuana should be um, absolutely decriminalized, and actually, recreational use. I'm not against either. I think part of it too is kind of the taboo. Like, I think there should be more research on mushrooms and and um, and marijuana Thanks, and the health, and you know, things like that that help that have medicinal purposes all these drugs that i did i guess at one point but i've seen the way 
I've seen the way methamphetamines have like completely ruined the life of, you know, a loved one and or crack or things like that. And so nothing about that wants me to legalize it. However, I did want to mention the new attorney general for California came in was um, sworn in December 7th. And in three days, he like enacted all these things. And one of them being um, for first offenders for drug offenses. Well, they decriminalize marijuana, you know, but first offenses, they get health services, like mental health services, as opposed yeah. to it being criminalized. That's the kind right. of stuff that I like. I'm here for that. Like if I, if you know somebody strung out, why are we sending them to jail? We're not helping them. You know what I'm saying? So my, we, I, I Instead of decriminalizing or legalize, I like the idea of like rehabilitating people. I yeah. think that we're doing, I think we're doing what you just said, Kim, reminds me of the argument we were having earlier about term limits. This is a multi layered thing, okay? Here's the real issue I've been to jail huh. Se several times, <laughs> several motherfucking times, okay? Hey. <laughs> several times. I've done about two oh. years altogether. Speaking true, Speaking true, yes. funny. Jeez, Half, wow. And it's crazy because before I went to jail, I had a certain image of criminals and motherfuckers that was in jail. When I'm in jail and I'm talking to people, I'm like, you're in here for that? You're in here for that? You're in here for that? It's yeah. all petty mm -hmm. shit. And a lot of it is like, you know, oh, they found this little something, something on me. And now I'm a felon. Yeah. For this much motherfucking cocaine. This much. And now I'm oh. a felon. And the people at jobs, they don't care about that. But the difference is... A prisoner sitting inside a cell makes the makes the government or whoever forty five thousand dollars a year. One I agree. Uh, now that so, I, I, so the yeah. issue is, it I make more money because if 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 we'd have to switch to healthcare, the government either has to pay for that or I have to pay it out of pocket, which means the money goes back to big pharma and the medical industry, or it goes to the government, or it comes Ooh. from the government. So the issue is this. This is going to sound sus, but can't. Okay, I'll address that in a second. But the right. issue is this. The issue is this. Damn it, Tristan. The issue Sorry. is, I said, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. The issue is that when it comes to that, there's too much money made to be made off a of motherfucker struggling with drugs. Half of the people who do dumb shit when they're high, they do it because they're afraid of getting caught for having drugs. It's paranoia that's attached to it. There's fear. There's all that extra stuff. There's also the fact that. If you get, and this also goes into the issue of police not knowing how to deal with mental health, not knowing, mm -hmm. let, me, let me not say police, but in general, when mm -hmm. you're dealing with people who have mental health issues and they're either self-medicating, self they're self-medicating or, or they're just having a bad, whatever it is, some police out there are incredibly empathetic. They know what it is. And a lot of those police probably knew somebody who was going through something similar. And also I'm not talking about all police, but there are people in this world who are out there who have no clue how to deal with this stuff because the system has taught them drug users are fucking junkies. They're pieces of shit. So therefore, when a when a home who's been raised that way, who has never had a chance to come out of the ideology encounters a drug addict, they don't see a victim. They don't see someone who could be saved. They see a, a criminal. Yeah, because you made a choice. Because you made a choice. Yeah, yeah. Not that cold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I should also say that I believe deeply in decriminalization. I just don't know if I'm for legalization. Let me clarify. Well, here's the, the only difference. Different. Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, I feel exactly the same way in decriminalization. Like, I don't think we should go after people using drugs. I think we should go after people who are dealing drugs and the supply. That's where I think we should focus our efforts. And we should rehabilitate people using drugs because they are victims. And that's so here's my even the small puns, though, I don't think they need to go to jail. I think the people who got the, the large quantities well, of drugs. But, but do you know which drug in this country is the deadliest drug? The drug that claims more lives than every other one combined? Cigarettes alcohol. and alcohol. Yeah. Right. Now, the thing about that is, and like I said, it might be counterproductive to the point I'm trying to make. But the reason I say that is, but at the same time, alcoholics get a lot more care. <laughs> they get a lot more care. They get a lot more care and consideration because I can, I can you're like my uncle Stanley, who's a drunk and, and people see in a drunk a little bit something different. They look at drunk people, people who drink too much. They look at them in a totally different way than they look at someone who's on drugs. One more thing, Tristan. So in in in, in some of those states in some of those countries I was talking about where they legalize stuff like heroin, they have this thing called safe injection sites. Yeah. Now. 
the reason I bring that up is because a drug user is going to use, going to do what they want to do. Yes, they, are. they want it. They're going to get it. They're going to find it's going to happen. Now, making it a crime only punishes them for you know doing that, despite whatever reasons. But making it legal allows for us to set things in place like that, like a safe injection site, which if does, does anyone need that explained? OK, a safe injection site is a place where medical professionals administer drug injections to people who are addicts. I thought they just get them free syringes. Right. I, I, mean, I, think my understanding, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. But my understanding is that they, they either facilitate it, oversee it. So in case you have a, a bad reaction, they can hit you with Narcan. Right. Yeah, I, don't there. Think, but I, don't I don't think they, they do the actual shooting, shooting up. But they well, do. this is the I reason I think, think they do. do. This is the reason I think they do. Do you know what a methadone clinic is? Yeah. yeah they, you, don't, don't get you don't go to a methadone clinic and they give you a free syringe. They administer your methadone. But methadone is a pill, right? No. no, it's a. It can be administered. It My dad actually uh, went to methadone clinics because he was um, addicted at one point to opioids, and uh, so he would go to methadone clinics to get off of them. But he was always on methadone my whole life. Wait, but they like shoot it. They shot him. They up. can. They can. Either way, whether they shoot you, whether they, uh, either way, it can be administered. The goal. Okay. The goal yeah. is to facilitate. Because like I said, these people are going to do what they do. The goal is to facilitate a healthy way, a healthy alternative for people not to die. Because are we trying to stop people from getting high or are we trying to stop them from dying? Because if we're trying to stop people from getting blitzed, then we need to cut cigarettes, alcohol, everything got to go. If the goal is to... (laughs) Go ahead, Tristan. No, I'm, I'm with Kim. I feel... I, the way I've heard of safe injection sites, I'm cool with in the sense that you go there, there are clean needles, and they will give you the needles, and they will give you Narcan if you OD. But also when you go there, there are healthcare professionals who talk to you about addiction and try to get you, like oh, the goal okay. isn't just to get you high. The goal is to make sure you don't kill yourself if you get high and to try to get you help in the process. I'm cool with that. I'm going to be real. I'm not cool with tax-funded Get fucked up houses like that ain't gonna well, that ain't gonna work for me. There. Like methadone clinics aren't to get people fucked up. It's to yeah, get now methadone, methadone is different. I understand method. Yeah. I mean, like places where you get safe needles to shoot up like actual drugs. Methadone right. is because people you can't you would die with through withdrawals if you came off certain drugs if you're on them for a while. Right. So the methadone is for the in between time. I'm cool with that, and I'm understand that completely. But like yeah. we can't be having heroin houses that are funded by like nurses shooting up heroin. Let that me let me let me clarify. Heroin. Let me clarify. You're right. They don't administer injections. Now, safe injection sites, they don't administer them. They but they give you clean needles. They supervise them. That's what the right. word is. That's the word I'm, I'm fine looking with for. that. I'm cool they supervise with that. it. But my point all- is, my point isn't so much that you're gonna go there and get that's not my point. My point is things like that need to exist. But you can't, but you can't if it's illegal. See what I'm saying? Like, if it's illegal, you're basically saying, like, hey, everybody who wants to get high is going to be in this building. Come arrest them. So I feel like that's why legalization should happen, because places like that need to exist where people can go and not die. Because to me, that's the biggest issue with all that. The methadone clinics. Okay, not methadone clinics. Mm-hmm. Wait, these places you're talking about—they're not in the U.S. They're yeah, some of them are. Some of them are. There's some, some, of the, some of them. We do. Okay. We do. But there's, we have the there's a difference between okay. a supervised. There's a difference between a supervised injection site and a methadone clinic. Methadone right. clinic is specifically trying to help people get off right. of heroin. Oh, that's, yeah. that's why I stopped saying that. Not methadone clinic. The inject, right. supervised injection. Supervised site. injection those sites are, is like a safe place. It's like a um. A what do they call house. it? Are those here in the U.S.? They have some here. Yes. And they Seattle. have them in it, even if it's illegal, right? But there are places where it's not illegal, statewide. Seattle. Oh. They Wait, have them in Seattle. They have them in places. So, Derek, when you said Seattle, everything, pretty much everything's legal, you mean all drugs. Like, oh, well, yeah, they won't, prosecute, they won't prosecute you in King County unless you have three grams. Mm-hmm. That's what? what I heard. Of anything or weed? Anything. Anything. Interesting. Hmm. But you know what? Also, I think oh, the reason God. why separate if something is legalized, I don't, I don't want there to be mass production of heroin. Does that make sense? Like, I don't want like companies to like bottle and sell heroin the way they used to with the Sears and Robot catalog. You mean like oxycodone? Because they don't they don't. Bottle can I be, can I be real honest? But here's but here's my here's my issue. 
First of all, there are doctors Dr. now. Z. They pro morphine, but we'll see. But no, <laughs> now they there are some drugs that are hard drugs like 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 Percocet, Vicodin, etc. They have a real place in pain management. They do. And you the think heroin issue, does not? I didn't say it didn't. If here's the okay. thing, if you want to make heroin a drug that's prescribed by a doctor and done under the supervision of a doctor in very rare circumstances, that's fine. The issue with like prescription drugs isn't that people people use them, they abuse them, and doctors overprescribe them. And we've now started arresting doctors Do for overprescribing. You think that's the only way people get hooked onto... Let's be clear. The reason we're having this conversation is because when the drug war spilled over into suburbia, that's really why this is a topic. It's true. Let's it's be true. clear, right? Fair. And it spilled over into suburbia via prescribed meds. People, But then when you realize that addiction wasn't a poor thing, it wasn't a black thing, it was a people Everybody thing. Did. Right. So then we have to attack it differently. So my issue is this. It's like we have drugs are drugs and they're used for multitude of things, period. Mm -hmm. Now, we're asking ourselves to create to treat people who use drugs as if they are the same because I've shared the space with people who were in there for crimes that, I, that weren't anything like mine. We can't lump those things together because at the end of the day, it still paints this picture that this is bad. So it, it, we're only even having this conversation recently because of that. Go ahead, Mo. First of all, you got to love me because I agree with you. Hey. <laughs> Secondly, I think we really have a focus on, which is going to be a big um, hump to get into uh, that's preventing drugs becoming um, legal is the criminal justice system hmm. um, and, the need it. And, the, and the prison industrial complex. They need it. Uh, there's over a million prisoners in this country because of yeah. marijuana. 50% of the entire world's population of prisoners is, is right a, here. They're good old American USA. prisoners. So well, as soon as they started America, making money off putting people in prison, you already got a system. Like, there, when capitalism take over, there, there so. are prisons on the New York Stock Exchange. No, I do not own yeah. any stocks. I do not own any stocks. <laughs> there is a line I have not crossed. That by, the I way, can't do. by the way, there is a rumor that Michael Jordan owns stocks in private prisons. He does not. It's I heard that he owned no. prisons, not stocks, no. actual prisons. No, there is actually a, a Caucasian man that is named Jordan. Michael Jordan. <laughs> it's the weirdest thing, but he does not personally own any private prisons. So just a little fun fact, y'all. But um, until, until these changes are made with the prison industrial complex, the bigger issue of prisons is, um, is going to continue to linger. And unfortunately, these conservative uh, state senators and uh, congressmen are not going to budge because a lot of their people actually work at those prisons because they're in smaller towns. The previous industry they had left because of whatever, you know, coal, whatever left. So these, no, they took these prisons on. No, she's and right. That, and that's, and that's the, literally the only industry within their small town. And, and we, um, guys, um, I don't want to, we're getting close to time. I know people have stuff to do. So Tristan, and then we're going to go to our final commercial break and come back. For oh, final I was just going to say, kind of tying into what she said with the prison industrial complex. I think one of the most messed up things about places yeah. where, where weed is legal now is that most, um, I think most states where it's legal, if you have a marijuana conviction, you can't actually get a license to grow, to own, to sell if you have a drug conviction. So right. the messed up part is you put me in jail for something you've legalized and I'm making millions off now. And you're telling me that I can't be a part of it because I did it before it was the way that just feels and it, and it disproportionately affects black men because more often than not. Black men have a weed conviction, and you know some white dudes don't. Some white. That's dudes. all. Okay. Well, we're gonna head into. Uh, sorry, go ahead. You were saying something? It feels very colonial. We're going to head into our uh, last commercial break, and then when we come back, we'll have our final thoughts.
How long have you all been married? How long have we been married? When this video posts, what, um... What can wash away? Anyway, seven, Let's pretty see. much seven years, pretty much. Nothing but the blood. Here she goes again from the last oh, video. Jesus. Trying to get me to smell something. Who can make? Sing, bang. Oh. Behold, I can. <laughs> Nothing but the blood of a Jesus. <laughs> hey, Lord. That was a uh, shadow run RPG missions, which is every Tuesday at on Twitch master of rim twitch.tv slash master of rim. I am on that and I play Kaida Norrell, a elven mage. And the other commercial was from the mompreneur plug, a yeah. great fun, hilarious channel right now. She's got a skit up talking about black grandmas and what they say at Christmas. So funny. So head over to that channel, get yourself a good old laugh or get some entertainment or find out some mom life hacks or also how to be an entrepreneur. Hallelujah. All right. So let's head into our main, hmm, our final thoughts for this evening. So final thoughts is a chance for everyone at the panel to tell what you hope that other people got from the conversation or what you are leaving with the conversation with. And we will start with one of our new panelists. Let's start with Melissa. Oh, um, I guess, yeah, I, I think um, a lot of like what Kim was saying about the difference between legalization and decriminalization, um, that's kind of what I hope people took away from this conversation um, and how we shouldn't be, gosh, I, I feel like so put on the spot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> My bad. <laughs> It's okay. okay. But yeah, um, I don't know how to sum it up. I mean, I, I agree with a lot of things that everybody has said here on this subject matter about the prison system. And yeah, I just, there are a lot of different elements to it that I hope people are considering when they think about this topic. Excellent. Okay. That's Melissa Manning. And you can find her at Melissa Manning. VO.com, M E L I S S A M A N N I N G, VO.com. All righty, let's talk to. Let's go to Derek. Thank you. Um, okay, can you hear me? Yep. So let me just recap some of the things I said earlier because we kind of moved on. So we were saying that if you legalize drugs, then it limits or it does away with street sales. But what I'm trying to explain is that no one has proposed legalizing drugs for minors. Okay. So, and it's like, I've, I've met with the police. They spend their time busting minors for drugs. Okay. Also too, you can look in the New York times, their most recent article about uh, Colorado, which legalized marijuana in 2012. Uh, it refers to Colorado as a center for the black market for marijuana in the United States. Okay. So that's one thing. Also, too, with regard to Portugal, I haven't figured out what exactly it is with Portugal, but it's it's this there's some sort of a fanboy thing going on here. It's all uncritical. Um, I would I would like to go to Portugal. I don't maybe maybe it is as good as it, as it is. But the, the Obama the Obama administration uh, actually put out a fact sheet about how it's really just superficial talking points about Portugal, and you can look that up. It's not difficult to find, and even if is what they say it is. I live north of Seattle. I've been there, and it's Portugal isn't everywhere. Okay, like in the state of Washington, we throw money at veterans for uh, rehabilitation from drugs. But you know what? It's it's a needle in a haystack. Someone who actually gets mm -hmm. rehabilitated. So so in other words, they, uh, rehabilitation does not seem to be an option. People just enjoy doing drugs. We're just gonna have to accept that. We're gonna have to. <laughs> Protestant work, work ethic where it's like, if you don't work, you don't eat, you know, that's, that's like a uh, hundred years ago. Okay. We're going to have to get away from that. And uh, basically, yeah, just Portugal is not the entire world. You know, you got to compare it to other places like Seattle. And um, there's a new documentary out about it from Como News. You can look it up. Okay. Por Portugal apparently got some, you know, all right. So, you can find Derek on Instagram 
at judge underscore D underscore rock or on parlor, which we did not discuss, which I meant to discuss. I meant to ask you some questions um, at solid quarry. Solid S-O- quarry. Solid quarry. Yeah. Whatever. S O L I D Q U A R R Y on parlor. All right. Had a great time. Mo? Thank you very much. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks for being here. Mo. Two things. Um, Criminalizing uh, drugs is not about rehabilitation of the communities. It's also not for uh, prevention. It's strictly for uh, capitalism, pur- capitalistic purposes, because the courts are making money, uh, the local governments are making money, the prisoner um, industrial complex is making money. The only people that are making money is the people that are getting locked up over these trivial charges. And if you want to talk about kids, in my generation, there was a thing called inhalants where they were literally getting uh, WD-40 and all types of other crazy stuff out of the hardware store and was literally snorting it in their nose. So hmm. unfortunately, kids are going to do stupid things. It's the it's the parent's responsibility in order to make sure that they're too busy to be doing stupid things. So and secondly, you know, I love everybody. So if you just, you know, give your blessings, however you need, whether it's a dollar, five dollars, twenty dollars, whatever amount that you have, make sure you cash at me at Mo Smith Pro. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And I'm not saying that you have to do it if you just find it in your heart. If you get if you give a hundred to Trump, you can definitely give a hundred to me. No, she didn't. <laughs> Glory to God. All right. What are you doing? Okay, you can find Mo Smith Pro at on Instagram at Mo M O E Smith Pro or Cash App. Send it at send that cash. uh, Dollar sign Mo Smith Pro. All right, Kim. Um. Yeah. Final thoughts. I still feel um that. Drugs should be decriminalized, not legalized. Um, I understand what Mo was saying about um, the prison industrial complex. And until we kind of address some of the ju- um, justice system issues, um, I don't have much hope for <laughs> the drug, the war on drugs, because um, it's just making too many people too much money. Um, second thought. I really want to know what Tristan, what candle he was sniffing because it. Every time he got stressed out, he was like pulling it out, like <laughs> and then put it down because I want to know. Um, and thirdly, y'all read up on the vaccine. Don't be afraid of it. Find out information. Like I want to get back to work, and I can't get back to work till a whole bunch of us get this vaccine together. So, um, find please do your due diligence and read up about it, and don't just be afraid. Okay, we can get through this together. That's my final thought. Awesome. That's Kimberly Render. You can find her on Instagram at Kimberly.Sings. Kimberly is spelled K-I-M-B-E-R-L-I dot Sings. Um, also, Kim, you know when, when Black folks do like this, a lot of people don't. They get nervous. They, they tune out. <laughs> I'm sorry. You put my opera voice yeah, you just, on. <laughs> just Please don't get your vaccines. Please research it. This is great news. This is progress for this country and for the world. Please get your vaccines. Was that okay. more? I was just being funny, but either way, they heard it twice. They heard okay. so they hopefully they got the message. Yeah. Uh Tristan. Sorry, I was trying to unmute. Um, uh, I just want to encourage anybody who's watching, please like do your own research on the history of criminalization of drugs. Legitimately, I don't want to be just to make race about everything, but it's deeply deeply based in race. And that's not just with weed, that's literally with all the drugs that we've criminalized. Um, Please get the vaccine, like Kim said. I want to go back to regular life. I want to go to conscious again. I want to see Beyonce do the damn thing. Please get vaccinated. I mean, oh shit. Okay, let me stop. Um, Also, Kim asked about this candle. So this is black owned. This is by Jackie Ina. The company's called Forever Mood, F-O-R-V-R. 
Um, they smell amazing and they have dope names like Grown Folks Business. I have another one called Cup. You know what Grown Folks room. Business for? They're super. You know what time it is? Let's okay. They smell hey. super sexy. They last a long time. Um, but yeah, support black business. Absolutely, and all that good stuff. that's enough free publicity. <laughs> right. Yeah, she got the ad, whoever that is got to buy ad space next time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. Uh, Sam, oh, I'm sorry. You can find Tristan Daniels on IG at Tristan Daniels, T R I S T A N D A N I E L S. Sam. All right. So I guess, kind of in addition to what everything everyone else said, because I agree with the legalization versus decriminalization and um, the capitalistic. Uh, incentives of the prison system and you know again I think it's very clear that I I believe racism is systematic and uh, inbred in um, I mean it, it is like the origin of our country I mean the history the the system the justice system the police system the war on drugs the I mean the housing system the College, I mean, the education system, like it is, it is so pervasive in this country. And, you know, I know Tristan said he didn't want to make it about race or whatever, but the problem is it is, it has been about race from the beginning, from the beginning of this country. It has been about race. <laughs> So it's not about making it about that or not at this point. It's just saying, yeah, it is. And there are definitely, um, there's there's privileges given to white people and, and white groups of people that are not being seen on the other side, especially now. Um, and all of that has to do with the legalization of certain drugs and others being criminalized the way they have been. And um, I think that there are different classes of drugs and I do think it is important to uh, recognize that and consider that when making laws about this. But I think that the criminalization of marijuana is Okay, Ridiculous. excellent. That was um, Sam, Samantha Harden. You can find her on Instagram at Sam Sells ATL Homes. One word, no spaces, no dots, no underscores. S A M S E L L S A T L H O M E S. Or you can find her at Marley Bears ATL, M A R L E Y B E A R S A T L. Wonderful. And before I say my final thoughts, first of all, once again, thank you to all my panelists. Jose had to dip out, so we didn't get his final thoughts, but thank you, Jose. Everyone who watched, whether you stopped in for five seconds, hit a comment and left, or whether you stayed with us the whole time, I'm so happy that you're here and that you're part of this Talk It Out family. Let's help grow the Talk It Out family. Like and share this video. This is live right now, but we will post um, to YouTube immediately. Also, new episodes. If you know people who rather listen to this, the, um, their new episodes are available every Monday. 6 a.m. on Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, uh, Radio Public, all that, all that fun stuff. So go ahead and check that out. Um, okay, so my final thoughts is what everyone has said here today about the war, the issue with drugs, it centers on one specific thing. We should not be criminally punishing people for having a substance issue. Whether it's legalization, it shouldn't be a criminal punishment. Sadly, none of the I didn't I don't have anyone here on the on the panel, but there are some people who feel like using drugs makes you somehow less than or less than deserving. But at the end of the day, people are people. We all have our vices, whether yours is sex, drugs, whatever. We shouldn't we shouldn't be sending people to jail for this. So um my personal opinion is that this needs to be a conversation. One of the comments said, why can't Congress have pr uh, productive dialogue like this? Because Congress ain't got me. But I'm just kidding. <laughs> but no, for real, like it would be so great if people in, in positions to make these kind of um, choices were having conversations like this that weren't about necessarily political power, that were more about like the quality of lives of the people in this country. Because then I think we would see a lot of changes across the board that everyone could be happy with. So 
as you go about your life and your day, just just lead with empathy. I think that's what I'm really hearing is that we care about these people having these drug issues and we don't want them to see their lives be like ruined for something like that. So lead with empathy, share and love. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at Dury with a yay, D-U-R-E-Y-W-I-T-H-A-Y-A-Y. And I want to thank you all for coming. And I want to remind you, Talk It Out is a space where people of opposing views can get together and have a healthy, productive dialogue in a respectful way. Keeping in mind that it's not always about proving, oh, who's right or who's wrong. Sometimes it's about proving. I'm sorry. I just messed up my whole intro at the end because I just thought of something. Because Sam, when she was like, that work, that goes for y'all too. <laughs> My bad. Okay. So it's a place where people of opposing see, views. Get see, that's that white privilege. <laughs> see, that's that yep. white privilege. Because when Kim, yeah, but then right. I was just like, wait, right. Sam, you can't do that neither on the show. No. Um, but essentially, this is the place where check people. Check your white privilege. You, you got to. You got to. Okay, you got to check your. It's my white privilege. It's my white privilege. <laughs> my bad. This is the place bad, where people. Sam. It's okay. It, the intros, the outros messed up already. So we're just going with it where people of opposing views can get together and have a healthy, productive dialogue in a respectful way. Keeping in mind that it's not always about proving who's right and who's wrong. Sometimes it's simply about listening and being heard. Have a good night.